Hello, this is Stephanie from museums.love, and this is the very first podcast episode in our new series, Spotlight On. This is a look inside one of the exhibitions in the German Technical Museum in Berlin called Alles Zucker, or All About Sugar. In this episode, I want to give you a little look inside this exhibition because I would call it one of the best kept secrets of Berlin museums for English speakers. It also gives us a look inside local history that you might not expect. Although you can't find a lot of information or articles in English about this show, it's actually completely bilingual in German and English. It's really worth seeing because it goes way beyond what you might expect of sugar as a condiment at the coffee bar. And beyond the 2,500 sugar bowls that are in the museum's collection, there is a whole lot more to explore. As for the local history part, it turns out Berlin is the surprise dynamo behind our modern sugar consumption. And you thought clubs were Berlin's best known pleasure mills, but the sugar story started long before Bergheim, way back in the 1700s. In this episode, we'll look into the amazing history and chemistry of sugar as told in the museum exhibition. You can find out more about the museum in our video and our blog post, including photos and links for further reading. But without further ado, here's a sweet taste of what this show has to offer. Until the mid 1700s, sugar was primarily extracted from sugarcane. Because this plant didn't grow in Europe, anyone on that continent who wanted to eat sugar depended on sugar imported from far off places. In this museum, a sugarcane mill from Bolivia, dating to around 1700, is a relic of exactly this era. Three huge tree trunks studded with wooden cogs crushed the sugarcane until sweet liquid ran out into the spouts below. You can see a photo on our website. The sugarcane industry is, of course, a notoriously dark chapter of history since it depended on slave labor and oppressive colonial schemes. So it was huge, huge news when it came to light that sugar could be extracted from other plants, plants that would grow even in chilly northern Prussia and did not rely on the same sugar slave trade. This is where Berlin comes in. In 1747, it was a Berlin chemist, Andreas Sigismund Markov, who discovered that these roots contained sugars that could be extracted using alcohol and published his findings in the scientific journal of the Berlin Royal Academy of Arts and Sciences, in French, of course, the universal language of scholarship at the time. Markov's discovery revolutionized sugar consumption in Europe because the stuff didn't have to come from imported cane sugar anymore. It could be grown at home. But it was Mark Graf's student, Franz Ackard, who found a way to extract sugar from beets on an industrial scale. That's when sugar consumption in Europe could really take off. Ackard, by the way, also made breakthroughs in how to grow tobacco in the cold Prussian climate. This was a guy who really catered to our carnal pleasures. His research led him to open the first sugar beet refinery in the world. It was in Silesia, a part of southern Prussia back then, now in modern Poland around the city of Breslau. In the wars against Napoleon, the refineries were burned down and the French built their own, surpassing Prussian production for decades to come. Ackard never recovered from these losses and he died before the Prussians ever regained sugar production power over the French. France today is still the number two producer of sugar beets worldwide, only behind Russia, which has a distinct advantage in square mileage. As you can see in this mini history, sugar production was not only an agricultural and industrial issue, but a very political one. And all this is brought together in this museum's wide ranging exhibition. The museum itself, in a more modern era of history, started with the Sugar Institute. It was established in Berlin in 1867, complete with laboratories for the research of what was, by then, a staple food in Europe. The Institute opened a museum for specialists in 1904 in Berlin's Wedding District. Coincidentally, the Sugar Museum was located at Amrumerstrasse 32 in the so-called African quarter of the city, an unfortunate, even if unintentional, reminder of the brutal colonial history of sugar. The Sugar Museum, like the Sugar Institute, was administered for a while by Berlin's Technical University and later by the State Museums of Berlin. This changed in 2012 when the museum closed and moved out of the building, which is still run by the university but now for medical imaging laboratories, and moved into the German Technical Museum, where many of the objects were unveiled in 2015 as the ex exhibition Alles Zucker, All About Sugar. In addition to the history of sugar, this exhibition illuminates the chemistry of sugar. Now, when we talk about sugar, we mean a specific subclass of carbohydrates. This will be familiar to anyone who's looked into low-carb diets. And carbohydrates are just molecules made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The atoms can be arranged in different numbers and shapes to make different kinds of carbohydrate molecule. They can exist in fairly small, compact structures or in longer chains. And depending on how big these molecules are, they're divided into four main groups, ranging from monosaccharides, the shortest or smallest, to polysaccharides, the biggest or longest. Sugar and starch belong to the shorter categories, and cellulose, plant material, to the longest one. 
The way the molecules are shaped affects how they interact with our body chemistry, which is why sugar tastes sweet and serves as an energy source for us, that is, as calories, while the cellulose that makes up plant fibers does not taste sweet and is not digestible for us. That's dietary fiber. So the kind of carbohydrate in sugar cane and sugar beets is one of the shorter carbohydrate molecules called sucrose, a disaccharide. But there is a huge variety of carbohydrate molecules out there that I had never heard of before this exhibition. For instance, there's a type of big crab that lives in Japan. It's huge, it has a leg span of almost two meters. For instance, there is a kind of big crab that lives in Japan. It's huge, it has a leg span of almost two meters. And it shows how a kind of sugar, chitin, is the primary material in the exoskeletons of crabs and other arthropods, as well as insects and fish scales. And it's the main thing mushrooms are made out of. How sugar works inside human bodies is also pretty magical, and that's another focus of this exhibition. The breast milk of human mothers, for instance, is high in sugar because our big old brains need more of it than other mammals do, whose milk is correspondingly higher in protein. A special kind of sugar coats even the inside of our stomachs in order to protect them from being corroded by their own stomach acid. Finally, this exhibition looks at sugar as an industrial material and a source of clean energy. Sugar molecules provide energy not only for our bodies, but increasingly for green energy like bioreactors and environmentally friendly building materials. And they are used now in packaging materials, 3D printing, even medical devices. It turns out that sugar is a, to me, unexpected vanguard in really new technologies. If you decide to go see this show and you speak German, you can also take part in one of the German language tours on Sundays that take one hour. Otherwise, if you don't speak German, just go and read the English text and interact with the exhibitions. As you might have seen in our video, this is a very interactive museum, so you'll have a lot of fun. Have a great time if you go, and even if you don't, you can find out more on our website, museums.love. There are links for further reading, extra photos, everything you could want to know about this exhibition. See you there!